Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Sunday night service and praise the Lord. Sorry, I'm a little bit, a few minutes late. We had a lot of stuff going on this afternoon. Uh, we were able to get a few things done um, over at the church that we needed that we needed to get taken care of. And we had a real blessing, um, you know, fellowshipping and having, having some uh, wonderful time with uh, just... Uh, spending with sharing the Lord uh, with uh, other uh, sisters in Christ, and it was wonderful. And uh, Marsha and I were just uh, also we posted a video. Um, just uh, had a uh, a person who tried to open up Marsha's Jeep when we weren't home, and well, we'll just pray for her that she comes to know Jesus because you know the answer is not in, in quick gain, but the answer is in Christ that that eternal gain that you have forever and ever and ever. So. Uh, we'll just pray for her, and, and uh, we're going to pray, and we'll go into the Word. Let's pray together as we get into God's Word tonight. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you uh, for this night. And Lord, you know, just come to you right now for this uh, this woman that was uh, trying to get into Marsha's uh, Jeep. And Lord, I just pray that she would come to know you as Savior and Lord. I just, Lord, I just ask that you would just meet her uh, where she is and bring her to Christ because she needs you, Lord. She desperately needs you. And Lord, I just pray that um, for for each one, Lord, that uh, tonight that uh, we would seek you with all of our heart, soul, your mind, and strength, Lord, that we would love you that way each and every day. And God, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for your love, your kindness, compassion towards each one of us. Lord, you're not willing that any perish but all come to repentance. And Lord, we do thank you for that. And God, I pray that tonight your blessings would be upon your word and upon those that hear and let them hear what you have to say. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Marcia said amen too. <laughs> amen. So tonight, if you would turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Hebrews chapter 12. Looking at verses 1 through 4. So if you have your Bible, and I pray you do, let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Wherefore seeing. We are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Amen. You know, I thank God because as we look at the scriptures here in Hebrews and, we're, and we look at this, we remember that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You know, the, it is wonderful knowing that the Lord is is there. You know, the... You know, the angels of heaven even, you know, wanting to peer into the things dealing with redemption. You know, I mean, the Bible talks to us about that, that, you know, and, and how the saints are actually going to judge angels. You know, isn't that amazing? That's something to think about. You know, um, it's an amazing thing, you know, what the scripture talks about. And, and in here, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, and we're supposed to lay aside every weight and, and the sin which does so easily beset us. And run with patience the race that's set before us. You know, Paul illustrated this right. I and we think it's Paul. I mean, there's nobody really has um, nobody signed the book of Hebrews. You know, we so there's no clear um, clear evidence of exactly who wrote this. But the writer here of Hebrews definitely knew something about racing. And here in this race, you know, in a race. You want to be as light as possible. You don't want to have extra weights on you. Even today, there's companies that spend, you know, spend millions of dollars designing, um, you know, footwear and clothing that lightens, that that is, you know, extremely light in weight, and and it's able to do what the runners need it to do to perform well. And and so they want every advantage they can possibly have with their their equipment. And so, uh, you know, they don't carry extra weights on them. And and they would certainly not run with a weighted vest on. Uh, maybe in training they would do that, but not in in a real race. And so, you know, sin is like those weights, you know, that weighted vest. And if you've ever um, held one of those things, they're very heavy. And imagine trying to run a race with that. I don't think you'd do too well. 
Uh, but here we see it says that we are to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that's set before us. You know, um, things that would detract, things that would lead you away from God, things that uh, maybe it's not overt sin that you you know you're you're dealing with, but it's something that doesn't profit. It's not profitable. It's not beneficial. It's not helpful. Those things in your walk, you know, get rid of those things. Get those things out of your life because you don't need those things in your life. What you need is Jesus. What you need is His Word. You need to. You know, put those things that would that would slow you down in your walk, put those things away and follow Jesus Christ. Follow him because you can never go wrong following the Lord Jesus Christ and run with patience. The race that we have is a patient. We need to be patient in this race. It's not that, you know, today you go to bed, tomorrow you wake up with in, in you're in heaven. Maybe that's the case. You know, some people certainly, you know, don't. Um, are not expecting to all of a sudden be in the presence of the Lord and then suddenly they are, you know, because they, they die in this world, but they go to life eternal. And But, you know, in our lives, we have to understand that this, this race that we're running with the Lord, it's one that we do with patience. We know that, that it's not something that we just give a little effort today and then tomorrow we, we're not. No, it's a continuous run until... We reach the prize, and that prize is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When we go to see him face to face, whether it be when he calls us all home or whether it be when you go home individually, whatever it is, you keep running this race and be faithful to the Lord until that day. Don't don't uh, give up and don't you know get discouraged. And, and sure, there are things that are not always going to go your way, and there are going to be things that happen in life that are going to be disappointments. There's going to be things that happen that are troubling. But you continue to run the race, continue to look to Jesus, continue to put your faith and trust in him. You know, this world is temporary, but eternal life, man, that's forever. And so lay aside every weight and the sin, which does so easily beset us. You know, sin, um, it's not a hard thing for sin to come upon us. It's an easy thing. And that's where you have to be on guard in your life against sin. It's not difficult to sin, but you need to keep yourself from sin. So this is the this is the battle. That's the challenge. The broad road that leads to destruction, it's easy road. It's broad, it's wide, it's easy. There's no stress on that road until you get to the end of it. And then you find out it's been a trap all along. And forever and ever and ever, you suffer the wrath of Almighty God, and that is not where you want to be. God doesn't want you there either. He wants you to have life eternal. That's that narrow room in that difficult way. Amen? So run your race with patience. It says here, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He wrote it, and he will finish it. He, you know, he is the A to the and the Z. You know, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one who died on the cross. He is the one who paid the price for our sins. He is the one who did all of the work. What he's asking you to do and me to do is put our faith and trust in him. We repent of our sins, realizing that we can't save ourselves. We look to Jesus Christ and ask him, right, to forgive us of our sin. And he will. He's willing. He wants to. You know, it's not like he's not willing. He's definitely very willing to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You know, it says here, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. You know, think about that for a minute. He, it was the joy that, that was before him that caused him to endure, to go through these things, to, to endure the cross and despise the shame. He went through all of those things for the joy that he knew was on the other side of that. The joy of seeing you and me born again, new creatures in Christ, seeing not just us, but anyone who puts their faith and trust in Jesus becoming brand new in him. Looking at, at the joy of fulfilling and doing what the Father called him to do. You know, I mean, think about this. For us, our joy 
is based on Jesus Christ. Our joy is in fulfilling his word. Our joy is trusting him all the way. All through life's journey, we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We look to him. We're looking for the day that he returns. We are, we are so looking forward to that day. Amen. And, and not only that, but if, if he delays his coming, we know that we're going to see him. And at some point in time, we're going to be in the presence of the Lord. And that joy of knowing that we have that precious, these precious promises, that gift, man, it motivates us to keep going, to be an overcomer, to endure to the end, to, to not give up this race, but to continue running this race all the way through. Because, why? We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus our Lord. More than conquerors. It says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. Understand that that there's going to be adversity, there's going to be troubles, there's going to be trials. Understand that there will be resistance as you run that race. Any, any person that's running a race can tell you, you know, there's times in the race where you're going downhill and, it's, uh, and you can run faster, but there's times where you're running uphill and that hill gets tough and the resistance is, is difficult and, and you got to push through, you got to keep pushing and pushing to go because if you give up and you stop, that's it. You're done. You know, you you won't be able to finish that race. You, your body will, in, especially in long distance runs. Um, I, I'll tell you this, that there was a time um, out at the base, I was working with a guy that was training for a half marathon. So um, I told him that I would run with him. And so we ran, uh, we ran around the base and it was like eight miles. We ran eight miles. And then we, and he w said, well, you know, he wanted to keep going. You know, we had already talked about it. He said he wanted to keep going to a second time around, so that would be equal to what he was preparing for. I said, "Okay, let's go." And on the second lap, as we ran that second eight miles, towards the last part of it, I think with the last mile, my shoe came untied, and I had to stop and tie my shoe because my laces had come completely undone. And as I stopped and untied my shoe and began to try to run again, it was as if concrete was in my, in, in my shoes. It was so, so difficult to keep going. And, um, and then as I kept trying to, to go, my other shoe came undone. And so I had to stop again and tie, and tie that one. And it was like, oh man, I felt like at that point that I just couldn't keep going. It was just so, it was so hard. And you know, in, instead of being able to run that last that last bit, I had to walk that last bit uh, that was left about a half mile because I just, I my body was saying, nope, you 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 quit running, and now you're trying to go again, and it's much much more difficult. And so, I guess that the, the whole point of that saying is, um, don't stop running, don't stop running this race because it gets harder, it gets harder. You know, people that that try to um, People don't understand this. If you are living for the Lord Jesus and then you go you go back and you go back to that the way that you used to live and try to live that way, uh, I will tell you that it will be worse for you. It will be worse than it ever was before. And you know, there's a scripture talking about when when the devil is cast out of a person, it goes to you know these barren places and it you know, it decides to go back to where it came from and it brings seven other demons worse than itself back to to where it came from and that's a bad that's a bad scenario you know that person is seven times worse than they were you know to begin with so this is why you need to make sure you know in your life you're following the lord don't walk away from jesus he's he's there for you all the way through walk with him go with him don't don't stop don't you know if you fall down then you know praise god get back up repent of your sin and keep going but run the race Continue to run that race. And it says here that ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So you haven't resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So there's more that you can do to fight against sin in your life. You can fight against it. Amen? And yes, we have brothers and sisters. Marie, you're right. We have brothers and sisters in Christ that encourage us, that strengthen us, because there are times when we feel run down, and we need that encouragement and that strength. And the Lord knows that we need that. That's why he says in his word for us to encourage one another daily. 
we need that encouragement we need that strength we you know that is talking with the scriptures iron sharpens iron we need that in our lives each and every day because if we don't have that sometimes we feel beat down and the enemy will jump all over that so you have not yet resisted under blood striving against sin means that we can do more in our lives to resist against sin and what does the bible tell us that when you know if we submit ourselves to god and resist the devil he'll flee from us right so you know resist sin in your life don't don't give in to that old nature but stand for the lord you know put his word in your heart in your mind in your lips put his word there and and stay grounded in the word of god if you do that you know and maybe you're still struggling then get a hold of that brother sister in christ and say hey pray for me and let's talk about the lord let's 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 encourage one another in jesus christ today and i'm telling you it make all the difference in your life amen well i praise the lord because god is good amen and you know just like this um this this poor lady that you know, get into Marsha's car earlier, you know, she needs the Lord. But we all were like that. All of us were lost and all of us were blind and all of us were walking in darkness. We need the Lord. She needs the Lord. And we'll pray for her that she comes to know Jesus Christ because God can set you free. Whoever you are, wherever you are, God can set you free. God can give you new life. And that's a good thing. Amen. There's people out there thinking that they, they're getting the answer in, in drugs and alcohol and all these things, but the answer is not there. The answer is in Jesus Christ. So turn to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Follow him all the days of your life. And you won't be disappointed. I promise you that. Amen. For all eternity. Well, God bless you guys. I pray that you have a, a really wonderful night. And tomorrow night, we'll have Encouraging Word broadcast, Lord willing, at 6 o'clock. Uh, pray for one another and continue to pray for us. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed night in Jesus Christ. God bless. Good night.